Okay, so as promised, here's our homeschool room. Um, like I said before, we do Montessori. So I have everything set up on open shelves and categorized by, somewhat categorized by subject. So this is our math shelf right now, which I'm itching to replace with a legitimate shelf. This shoe rack is from Target, and it's been in use ever since the very first time I did a Montessori room. Um, it's been a table for my son, it's been all kinds of things, and right now it is a substitute shelf. All right, so I, I also mentioned the felt board and that I would discuss how we use it. My son likes these hand bells. So one of the things that I do is laminate things and put Velcro tabs on them and use it to display things. I've put pictures of butterflies with parts labeled. And so for right now, I just have this hanging here so that he can see it. He didn't put it up on the board. He did it on his table. I put it up on the board, so it's not like he plays with the board or whatever. It's just a tool for me to display things. Sometimes I might have um, some card activities that, that he does on here, but they would be laminated cards. And like once I did a, an activity where it was land, water, and air, and he had to go through the animals and categorize them, and I had everything with a Velcro back on it so that he could stick it to the wall. Okay, so moving on, that's all the math stuff. This is the books, and all my books pretty much come from the library. My nature curriculum that we use comes with a literature list, and so I get the books for literature list, so right now we're gonna be moving, we just did weather, and we're moving into summer. So that's why I have a lot of weather and summer books. I'm also doing an at-home summer camp with him, so I have some random books that match the topics of that. Um, I have this little shelf here that I use to store three-part cards in and some objects that might match them. This is some life cycle stuff. Uh, the, these particular cards came from a Brainy kit, which I can go over later if anyone's interested in that. These are three-part cards. And um, another thing I can go over if anyone's interested is how do you use a three-part card and what is the point? Um, more cards and objects matching. Eventually these little boxes will be for uh, the pink, blue, and green series of Montessori uh, words and learning how to spell and stuff. I have this pet pillow here. It's a huge pillow because um, my son has some sensory processing seeking behaviors and he likes soft things to lay on so it has two different textures and it just gives him the opportunity to lay around or work or we read books there or whatever. Um, I have a movable alphabet. This is another Montessori thing. There are ways to DIY this. I bought this used from someone, so I didn't pay full price. They're not that, that expensive for the longevity of the use, but you can also DIY it and put it in a little, um, super easy to DIY. I can share that information. Um, so these are just open shelves that my son likes to do. Uh, puzzles and we're working on a continent right now so I have the first continent we're working on is Asia so I bought stuff from Montessori print shop for Asia and I got a ton of stuff we went to all kinds of stores and restaurants that were Asian and we learned about Asia the next continent we're doing is North America and I'm going to use the brainy kit for that which I'm waiting to get in the mail right now um, we do a lot of nature stuff. I have this uh, animal tracks and it's just another three part card and basically it has the animal, a footprint, a matching word, and then another card that I can't find that would go with it which would be the footprint and the word. So they match all three sets up together. So it's a pretty intense three part card activity. He gets through with like three of them and then we put it away and he'll do more later. We're doing sharks right now. He said he wanted to learn about sharks. So these are shark species. Um, we use sandpaper letters and the way I do that is, is a letter and then I have the movable alphabet letters. 
And then I have these cards that I get from Montessori Print Shop. And so as he's learning about S, he traces it with his finger. And then another activity we'll do is to find the S from the movable alphabet to put on the card. It takes a long time to get through those. And it's honestly not really his favorite work. But sometimes I make him do things that he doesn't really want to do because he needs to. But for the most part, I just let him pick whatever he wants. So, this is the room that I had Club Explorer in for a long time. And I've witnessed a lot of people coming over here and kind of being in awe of this. But I just want to make one thing clear. My son does not come in here and treat this room like a school. He doesn't come in here and go through everything like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. I mean, he might be drawn to the musical bells or whatever. Mom? Yeah. I need to hammer <clears throat> this. Okay, hang on, okay? Um, one of the things that I think I have figured out about him after I was kind of getting frustrated that he wasn't um, exploring all the different types of activities, but if I went and got it and started doing it with him, then he would be interested in it, but he wouldn't go get it himself. So what I started doing was, what I started doing was using this table, and this table has been in all different kinds of places. I rearranged this room periodically whenever I get an itch to do that. I started using this table and I put, I do a rotation and I basically have three to four activities on the table. And this is the table that seems to catch his attention. So when I put something on the table, this is where he'll go and start doing activities at. I think because of, maybe he's overstimulated from too many options or whatever. But if, if I go and grab something and bring it to the table, he's more interested in it. So basically what I do is, I no longer try to expect that he's going to come in here and like go grab an activity and work on it on his own, although sometimes he does do that. I do a solid rotation and I try to have, this is um, some basically pre-math geometry category work. Um, this is pre-reading and continent work. And then this is, um, would be considered because it's a puzzle, pre-math and uh, pre-reading. So. That's how we do it. I have all this stuff set up. It looks so nice and pretty, and he doesn't really utilize it the way I would love for him to. So I bring the activities to the table. It's a less of a selection, and this is what we go through. Now, we don't go through it in a day. Um, sometimes we might, but it's rare. This usually sits here for about a week, and we get to it eventually. I have tried to do specific school days and specific school times, and I just find that it's too much pressure. Um, to I put, It's putting pressure on me because I've set an expectation to do it, and then I put pressure on him to get the work done. And it's just we end up stressed out, and then I can't use that time to do other things that might come up. So I set these things on the table. These are my goals to accomplish, and whenever they get accomplished and he does the work, I put the tray away and I replace it with something else that I have out. Um, another thing that I use is, you can Google it, it's called the work box system. And I just have random, like typical preschool activities in here that are uh, cut and paste. I keep our Play-Doh, it's always accessible because he loves it in the bottom drawer. And then I have these uh, Random activities that if he feels like doing something that I don't have that, it just gives me another place to put things. So if he wants to go get something or he feels like he wants to cut and paste or whatever, I have those types of activities here. And this is from a preschool curriculum that I bought. It's a year-long preschool curriculum, and it costs $10. Uh, I have a basket because we have a workman. Hi, Paula. Um, and then the last thing, I have a clock at his level. So he's learning how to tell time, kind of, right now. He's learning the very, 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 very basics, which is labeling the parts and me continually telling him what it is. So don't think he's telling time, because he's not. I have a calendar that is way behind, so I don't have it all together. <laughs> hang on, hang on. And a mirror, because it's good for them to have a mirror at their level. So this mirror has been in all different places at all different heights. It's a mirror that I found at a thrift store. And so then over here, I have a closet. Be prepared. This is my storage. 
So the reason I keep so much out is because I have so much in storage. And this is where I rotate. So I keep all of my Brainy Kit supplies in one bin. Um, I put labels on these bins so they all stack nicely and I know what's inside of them. Um, and every now and then I go through stuff and sell it or give it away. But for the most part, I keep everything because, like I mentioned yesterday, it has the materials that I use, they have longevity, and that's why I'm willing to spend money on them. They have many uses. So this is more stuff, arts, crafts, whatever. And then the bins, again, stacked up there. And obviously this shelf didn't have, this closet didn't have shelves. So that is the only shelf that came in the closet. I had these two shelves. Um, one of them is from Ikea. One of them is from Target that I've had for probably 10 years. And I just stuffed them in there because that's what I needed. And I still have stuff crammed in the sides. <laughs> but, hey, I know where everything is, so that's what matters. And that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. So that's how we do it, and this is who does it.